Hello friends, my name is Kishan and welcome you in this video tutorial. In past few videos, we have seen how we can create a controller class in a spinning MVC. So basically, we create a Java class and we annotate that Java class at the rate of controller annotations and that class serves the purpose of controller in a spinning MVC. But there are another way of creating a controller class in a spinning MVC is having a class implemented the controller interface so how to create a controller in uh, in different way like uh, we can create a class which will implement a controller interface and uh, and uh, that class becomes a controller right so that fashion is uh, that fashion is not so much popular in the spring mbc but still for knowledge purpose i am going to share with you so there is another approach to, uh, through which you can create a controller class in a Spring MVC. So let's create a Java project, uh, dynamic web based project. So right click over here, go to the new and here you have an option dynamic web project. So let's uh, select this option and I would say uh, a Spring MVC controller. implements implements I would say a spring MBC implements controller interface this project name uh, is not so good but uh, uh, basically this name represents what we are what approach in what approach we are going to create uh, a spring mbc controller so based on the that functionality just i'm going to name this project name so a spring mbc implements controller interface web app and keep everything as default and click on the next again click on the next and finally click on the finish button and uh, dependent jars i'm going to copy from my existing project so in past we had done a couple of projects so just i'm going to uh, copy all dependent jars if you did not watch my previous video tutorial then i request you to go and watch my previous session previous videos so that uh, you will have at least basis basic understanding of spring mbc so these files leave views dispatcher servlet and wave.xml all i'm going to copy inside the VYNF say yes all so here I have copied uh, all dependent jars in the leaf folder and here in web.xml we have an entry of dispatcher servlet uh, who works as a controller in a spring mbc right and we have a web configuration file is called dispatcher servlet.xml so here you can have a lot of spring bean which you can define over here right uh, currently i have defined uh, like internal resource view resolver who is responsible to resolve the view name right so and here we have registered the, this package where our controller is present so let's create a one controller class in this package so right click on src go to the here and create a class and package name i'm going to specify com dot info take dot controller and controller name i'm going to specify hello world controller and this guy is going to implement a interface is called controller controller interface which belongs to this package and let's click on the finish uh, here our class basically implements a interface right so uh, this class has to implement all methods which is available in this controller interface and if you look into this interface there is only one abstract method is called handle request which takes two parameter http servlet request and http servlet response right it's a abstract method so you need to override in your uh, implementer class so that i'm going to do here and let's give the name of this variable request so usually when you create a controller using a servlet right by extending servlet class then we override do get or do post method and 
And this method basically takes HTTP subnet request and HTTP subnet response as an argument, right? So here method argument is similar to the do get and do post, right? This method argument you cannot change if you work, if you create a controller by implementing controller interface. But uh, if you create a controller by annotating a uh, at the rate controller, then you have option to pass any kind of parameter in this request handler method. But this method is basically inheriting from the controller interface, so you don't have control on this method arguments, right? So you will have to adhere with this, this method signature, method name, return type, everything will have to keep as it is, right? And here I'm not gonna use if uh, uh, beauty of a string framework is that uh, even you create a controller by annotating a, at the rate controller and you pass HTTP server request and response, then uh, Spring framework will basically will create a HTTP subnet request and response object and that will give it to you and whatever you want to do you can do that but here we have created a controller by implementing a controller interface in this case also a Spring framework will give you the request and response object and uh, whatever request parameter you are sending from the view that will be populated in this request object and if you want to take some action or uh, 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 and if you want to send uh, response back to the uh, uh, on the view then you can take care of the response uh, object right but i'm not going to use any these two parameter in this uh, within the method so just i'm leaving as it is and here i'm going to return object of model and view Sorry. but you are free to use this object so here just I'm going to return a view name like uh, I would say uh, you can give like main this view name I'm going to return that's it right and if you create a controller like this like in this fashion by implementing controller interface then this class you will have to register as a spring bin in the configuration file so that's the one of the drawbacks so here this is not going to work this is we are not going to we will have to configure a bin so this controller class it will have to register as a bean bean and you can specify name name or id and here i'm going to specify main slash main so this would be the url pattern and class name we have to specify as well so qualified name of class name so this bean you will have to register even though this is a controller so you are not using annotation based annotation to make this class as a controller so this con this controller basically implements controller interface so that's why you have to register in the configuration file right now this main uh, dot js we will have to create within the this here so let's create a main dot jsp inside the view so go to the new and create a main dot jsp And here we can display some message. Display some message with size S2. I would say welcome to Spring. Or uh, here, uh, you just uh, we are using model and view. So model and view has a lot of constructor. If you can see over here, so you can see a lot of constructor over here, right? So one constructor we have used in earlier project, right? This is the constructor we used. So here you can specify the logical view name that is nothing but the main. And here you can specify a model a model object name. So that I'm going to specify message and model object that is nothing but that I'm going to specify a string, simple string. So I would say welcome to a spring MVC world. And this message we can print on the main.jsp with this key using JSP expression language. So here we are going to print this message with the size of S2. So here dollar curly bracket open close and you can access this model object like this on the UI. And that's it, we are done. Now let me verify everything is on place. And here, yeah, everything done. This class we have registered in the Dispatcher server.xml. Let's run this application.
let's click on the finish and initially we'll get the 404 error because uh, there is no files available on the web content directly like index.html or index.jsp so there is no welcome file so initially we'll get the 404 error and we'll, we'll hit this application by slash main then our control the controller request handle method will be invoked and we'll get the output because we have given the url pattern slash main right so that's why here i'm going to hit by slash main and if you uh, press enter then see we get the output so this is also a way to create a controller in a spring mvc right so implementing class must override a request handler sorry a handle request method which will be invoked by the spring dispatcher servlet when the matching request comes in the request url pattern handled by the by this controller is defined in the spring configuration file right so which we did like this right so this is the url pattern of your control uh, however the drawback of this approach is the controller class cannot handle multiple request urls so you have a single url right you cannot define multiple urls that's the drop right but uh, if you uh, create a controller uh, by annotating at the data uh, controller annotation and if you annotate this method as at the rate request mapping and you can specify a value attribute and value attribute attribute takes a array of strings so you have a one request handle method but that can be that can handle many url so that we will see in next video right so i hope you enjoyed learning this video this code i'm going to upload on the upload on the github and github location i will specify in the video description right so thanks for watching this video and see you in the next video tutorial